Well, my friends, I have an update for you on 3i Atlas, and this is getting far more strange than what I expected. Not only in the last few weeks as it went by the sun did it get so hot that it turned blue, hotter than anything we've seen around the sun. Not only is it literally going 30% to 100% faster than any comet we've ever seen, but now we're finding out that it's accelerating, meaning that it's speeding up and we have no explanation for it. Is this technological? Some are absolutely claiming that it is. And what makes it even more strange is scientists are not speaking to other scientists about it. There's something very secret, something very strange going on about this. You're not going to want to miss this episode. Let's get into it. Hit that like button. Help me reach more people. And let's uncover the truth about what is really going on. Here is an interview that Avi Loeb did just yesterday on uh, NBC News. And I'm telling you, some of the parts of this makes me upset when you when you know i'll make sure you want uh, see that part uh because like i said there's just some really strange stuff going on but let's go ahead and check it out i don't know about you but i spent the weekend refreshing for updates on our our favorite interstellar visitor that comet or question mark three i atlas uh it is up to a little bit more strangeness. Now, last week, we told you that 3i Atlas was getting way brighter, way bluer as it got close to the sun. Well, now there is a new report from NASA that shows that 3i Atlas might be picking up a little speed in, quote, non-gravitational acceleration. But what does that mean? Well, basically, it means it's being propelled by some other force besides gravity. Maybe it's thrust from burning off of chemical compounds as it got near the sun, which happens... Uh, Occasionally, it would be natural for comets to usually burn off uh, some of those chemicals, and that's what you see in that big cloud afterwards. And we would see a very big cloud around it once we get a very good visual soon, but we haven't yet. In the meantime, the hype is in overdrive with headlines jumping. I mean, look at those headlines. Show sign of alien engine and non-gravitational acceleration. Alien ship uses engine to accelerate. Uh, comets location from Earth. Scientists, alien theories. This isn't crackpot. These are scientists that are wondering what in the world is this? Because this is not acting like a comet at all. Straight to conclusions. Alien ship uses engine. I mean, we're not there yet. Um, but before we jump to any of those conclusions, let's go straight to the source on everything interstellar travel. That is Harvard's professor Avi Lowe back again to help us break some of this down. Uh, professor, always great to see you. So you're hinting at a little bit of this the last time we talked. Now, non-gravitational acceleration. Like, how much acceleration are we talking here? Well, thanks for having me. It was uh, data from the ALMA Observatory, which is a millimeter wave uh, uh, set of uh, sensors that uh, presumably detected the three atlas as it approached uh, perihelion, closest approach to the sun. And uh, what uh, it discovered is a deviation by four arc seconds in right ascension from the expected path. And that's very significant, statistically significant. Uh, I calculated, given the level of acceleration that they inferred that was mm. reported uh, on the Jet Propulsion Lab uh, website for 3i Atlas, uh, is uh, that corresponds to uh, evaporation of about a sixth of the mass of the object to give hmm. it that kind of a boost uh, as a result of recoil. It's a very significant uh, uh, fraction of the mass of the object. Uh so what he's saying here, just so you know, that if for it to uh, accelerate like that, you would need it to evaporate up to 20% of its mass to do that. And that might propel it forward. However, um, you're going to hear there's no tail. There's no evidence of it. There's no evaporation of it at all means something else is going on. Maybe something's propelling it. I don't know. Uh, and uh, I calculated it based on momentum conservation. Uh, the material flowing in uh, away from the object in one direction gives it a kick in the opposite direction. There is no mm -hmm. way out of that. It's physics. And uh, under relatively conservative uh, assumptions about the escape speed of the uh, molecules or dust particles from the object, one gets that a substantial fraction of the mass of the object had to be evaporated. Right. So that means that if it's a comet, a natural comet, it should be surrounded by a cloud of gas that carries uh, 5 billion tons or more. And hmm. the object itself 
was losing a significant fraction of its mass. So, so that means when we look at the uh, 3A Atlas after it goes out of be uh, hiding behind the sun, uh, and that should happen within a week or two, uh, if it's a natural comet, we should really see a very bright, massive cloud of gas uh, and perhaps even a cometary tail that is extremely bright uh, around it. If we don't see that, the question is what propelled it? Uh, and uh, there is no way out. One way or another, we should figure out the nature of the object. If it evaporated, if 20% or so of the mass of the object got evaporated by sunlight, then we will know its nature because that's a substantial portion of the mass that the object was made of to start with. And we can uh, figure out what uh, composition that material has. Uh, it's 20% is such a, a large number, and yet, Ha, you know, it makes me think of the last time we saw something like this, a Muamua, which you studied so closely. Uh, we didn't see that type of, of cloud around it. That was another interstellar visitor. Yeah. What else could be going on here? So in the case of a Muamua, it occurred to me that it could be the sunlight reflecting, bouncing off its surface that could push it. And in fact, uh, three years later, there was actually another object discovered by the same telescope in Hawaii. It was given the name 2020 SO, discovered in September 2020. And uh, that one ended up uh, being recognized as a rocket booster from a launch in uh, 1966 by NASA because uh, we were able to infer the composition of, uh, of the surface surface of this object, which was stainless steel, uh, using an infrared uh, spectrograph. So it was clear that one was artificial. It was pushed by reflecting sunlight because it was hollow. And so that led me to suggest that maybe Oumuamua was also artificial. In this case, we do uh, detect gas around it, even when uh, we, we found it, even when it was far from the sun. The question is, uh, is there much more gas now? Uh, and uh, it's uh, possible because it got brighter. Uh, if we don't see that uh, very massive amount of mass uh, of gas around it, then uh, you know, the, there might be something else propelling it. You know, a, a spacecraft obviously can, in principle, have an engine that uh, will not produce such a massive cloud of gas. And he's about to, you know, like I said, say something that's pretty upsetting whenever you when you hear it. So stick with me. Um, but this is so fascinating. Like I said, this thing is moving faster, like 130,000 miles per hour. Uh, Hail Bop, I remember that comet came through a long time ago, like in 94 or something. And that one moved, I believe it was around 98,000 miles per hour. So this thing is going much faster. They also think that it's made of nickel, that it's made of nickel metal. They also say that it uh, shouldn't have gotten this bright blue around the sun. It's massive, the size of Mount Everest. And let me remind you, it's coming in line with the planetary plane which the odds of that are ridiculously small. I mean, it makes it seem like it's purposely going in that direction. And I just want to say that if you actually take all this in and you think about what's possible, you think about the scriptures, moments like these humble me. It makes me realize how, how small we are in the grand scheme of God's plan. You know, because we're, you know, we've launched telescopes or we've launched satellites. We've used telescopes to scale the heavens, but we still can't grasp everything around us. So what I do in these moments is I just trust in the one who holds it all together. Regardless of what this is, we don't have to fear. We don't have to fear at all. We just have to look at the heavens to say, oh God, you are so amazing to have put this all together. And who am I that you are mindful of me? And it makes me love him all that much more, that he cares for you and cares for me. Even while all this is still going on, he holds it all together. Psalm 19.1 says, the heavens declare the glory of God. Amen. Like I said, stick with me. You're going to hear some parts. Maybe uh, when you hear it, before I click and talk about it, let me know if you pick up the part that should probably make us a little upset. Yeah, or, or like you said, I mean, even a, a, a large stainless steel or stainless uh, nickel uh, you, you know, shape that is being pushed by this. All of it is is wild. And yet the most frustrating part, 
when are we going to see images? What's the latest with your quest to try to get some of the images released that NASA already has that may not be public because of the government shutdown? And when are we going to see land-based, like Earth-based uh, observations? Because I know that's right around the corner, right? Right. The, the high-rise camera on board the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter uh, took images of uh, three atlas when it came closest to Mars. That was uh, the third, the second and the third of October, uh, more than a month ago. And I tried to reach out to the principal investigator of that uh, camera. I didn't get a response. And I corresponded with uh, Representative Anna Paulina Luna, who uh, brilliantly decided to send uh, a letter to um, the uh, acting administrator of NASA, Sean Duffy. Uh, she sent it on uh, October 31st. We haven't heard mm -hmm. back from him. However, he immediately responded to a tweet from Kim Kardashian, who asked, uh, what is uh, uh, the tea about 3i Atlas? And he responded mm -hmm. to her. And my uh, complaint is that uh, in terms of priorities, he should respond uh, quicker to a letter from Congress or uh, to a scientist uh, who really wants to analyze that data. And unfortunately, we didn't hear back. So as of now, the claim is that this is a result of government shutdown. I think it's inappropriate to withhold the scientific information from the community because uh, we are planning future observations based on what we know about 3 Atlas. No, we, mm. we will continue to push for answers. Hopefully, Kim Kardashian will continue to push for answers, and, and hopefully uh, you'll get your answers sometime soon. Professor Avi Loeb, thank you so very much. I mean, how ridiculous is that? NASA has pictures of this object, the principal investigator that's, uh, that's supposed to be looking into this, and they're not releasing it after a month. Why aren't they releasing it? Well, they blame it on this government shutdown. So then you have... At like Harvard scientists and different scientists from around the country sending letters saying, hey, will you release the photos? And they don't they don't get any answer at all. They're just ignoring them. Then you have a letter from Congress saying, hey, what's up with this? What's up with this three atlas? We need answers. We want to know the public, the people that are funding you. They want to know what this is. But then Kim Kardashian puts out a tweet and he and, and he responds. He responds to Kim Kardashian. This is that's just ridiculous to me. That is so stupid to me. Like, oh, man, I, this is celebrity culture in the way we are. Um, it's backwards. It's wrong. It ain't right. Joel said in chapter 2, verse 30, that I will show wonders in heavens and on earth, blood, fire, and columns of smoke. So whether this is, this is natural or technological, whatever it is, the timing is striking. Because at the time when nations rising against nation, when there's famine, when there's discord, when, when lawlessness is increasing and people's hearts are being stirred, you know, you can sense that there's a, a move of God even going through the church, waking up the church, and many people are coming to Christ. I got a video I'm going to drop this uh, in the next few days, too, that is just completely blowing my mind about people that are actually giving their hearts or thinking about giving their hearts to Christ that people would have said they would have never done it. So NASA is silent. Politicians are asking for answers, and they're giving lever, le letters, and celebrities are even tweeting but maybe God's already given a letter. In Luke 21, 25, again, he says, there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. But then it says people faint in fear for what's coming on the world. So the question isn't whether there's life out there. The question isn't, is this alien technology? The question is, is your heart right with the Lord? Because Jesus is coming back. And he, the question is, he says, and will I find faith on the earth? Do you believe in Christ? Have you... Give an honest look into who Jesus is and what he did and what it means for you. I hope you will, because at one point we are all going to individually meet our creator and give an account to the things that we've done and what we've said. And the only way that you can be saved and be entered into glory, into eternal life, according to the Bible, is through Jesus and Jesus alone. So when I post a video here in the next few days about, about Jesus and about a famous atheist that's really questioning should he come to Christ and whatnot? I, I encourage you to give an open look to it. Look to Jesus. Come to know him. He loves you. He gave his life for you. And it's not by works that you're saved. The Bible says it's by faith because of the grace, the gift of God that's been given to you. Believe that Jesus loves you, that he gave his life for you on the cross, and you'll be saved. So thanks, guys, for being with me. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. This is nuts. 
Uh, but I, like I said, I read your comments. I like to hear from you. And I also like to see what you guys say to each other about this. If you got an update, send it to me. And I'm looking forward to continuing to cover 3i Atlas as we move along. We'll see you next time. Truth be told.